Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Butt Crack Cycles. This is my YouTube channel. It's all about old school Harley Davidsons and my name is Paul. And with sort of my uh, introduction out of the way, this particular episode is all about my shovel head bike. Um, this is my third episode I've done about this motorcycle. It's kind of a Frankenstein and you can go back and watch some of my older episodes if you want to learn more about it. Um, I'm currently still in the process of getting this bike back on the road after it sat in a garage for over a decade, I think around 12 or 13 years. And I was really hoping to end this episode with a running and riding motorcycle. I bought this bike running and riding, though it didn't do either of those very well, and it had a lot of problems, though I didn't pay very much for it. I've just spent the last two months or so sorting through these problems one at a time. So, without any more chatting, let's dive into the meat and potatoes of this episode and get into fixing an old shovel head. This is part two. If you want to learn more about this bike or watch part one, there's like a playlist somewhere on my channel. I don't know how to put links in the video, but you can find more videos about it if you want. Okay, I'm going to shut up and uh, let's get into the action. I'm going to pull this cap off since that cork gasket, oops, sorry, I had my thumb in there. Um, that cork gasket, if my camera will focus on it, seems to be shot and is leaking. And I need to change this little in tank filter as well. And then we'll be done with the service on this and we can fill it back up with some nice, clean, fresh oil. Bam, movie magic. Got a new cork boy and a new filter boy. So, we should be good to go on that. No more leaks here, which will be nice. And I think the next thing I'm going to worry about, take this kicker out of the way, is replacing this braided stainless steel oil line up to the rocker boxes. Um, this just looks bad to me, and in my opinion, it is an oil leak waiting to happen. I think it's super cheesy when you do the braided stainless steel lines with hose clamps around them. That's not really how this stuff works. It should have a JIC fitting or an AN fitting, whatever you want to call it, uh, the tapered screw-on fittings on the end, um, but just having like the brass tees and nipples and stuff. This is not a good look, and I just think that going to this solid brass line where it runs up the middle will be much nicer looking and cleaner and probably a lot less susceptible to oil leaks. Um, I have also heard, I don't know if there's any truth to, to this, that running the oil lines that way is better for oil distribution to the rocker boxes because instead of having to pass through the back cylinder rocker box and then go through the oil line to the front cylinder's rocker box, they just kind of come up the middle and they both get oil equally at the same time on you know a cold start. Um, maybe there's some truth to that. Really, I'm just doing it because I think uh, that braided stainless is just cheesy as all get out and like i said i think that's just oil leak waiting to happen so i got the oil feed lines changed out pulling the old braided stainless steel stuff out was pretty straightforward and installing this kit was also very straightforward it came from old stuff i think i got it from lowbrow customs and it went on very simply, pretty happy with this. So I went ahead and threw the carburetor back on. If you watched my last episode about this bike, I rebuilt the carburetor in it. Then it was on to other stuff. Oh, well, you might see I've got some spark plugs there on the seat of this bike. And we're gonna change them. Because these ones look pretty old. And spark plugs are cheap and easy. But what I want to do is, before I go putting these new plugs in, um, 
I want to just double check that I've got the right ones. I believe that shovel heads came with two different reach spark plugs in the cylinder heads that, you know, you can have a short reach or a long reach. And obviously you want to have the right one. Um, you put a short reach plug in a long reach head, it's probably not going to run because you're not getting the plug down into the combustion chamber. And if you put a long reach plug into a short reach head, well, then you're probably going to run into shit. So, wouldn't you know it? The long reach plug that just came out of it, and I've got short reach plugs. I ordered these just off of what I thought the, the bike was, because um, I didn't have the bike with me when I was ordering this to take the part number off of the plug. So, I think I need to get some different spark plugs. What do you think? Okay, let's talk about these spark plugs a little bit more. I pulled a long reach plug out of both of these cylinder heads, and I had ordered some short reach plugs for it, which is what a uh, shovel head calls for from 66 up until I think 74. And I was thinking this was like a 71 engine, and I still think that I'm correct. If you look down into the spark plug holes, you will see these are helical plugs, and my understanding is, correct me if I'm wrong, that the helical plugs came like this from the factory. You can see it in there, that sort of thread insert. And, um, it is indeed a short reach hole. If you were to put this long reach one in, you're gonna have a bunch of threads sticking out and you can see that is, get the camera to focus, exactly what has been happening here. You can see there's a little oil right here on the threads and that's probably the extent of what threads were actually holding it in. And everything up here is dark and black and sooty because this was all sticking out into the combustion chamber. And I'm not really, sure why this uh, spark plug isn't physically damaged. I kind of would think that, come on camera focus, there it goes. Kind of would think that maybe it would have been hitting something. Evidently not, because this bike did run. And it looks like these plugs have been in there for quite some time. But I'm going to put the short reach ones in there and just see how it does. I bet it'll run perfectly fine with these. And if we have a problem, maybe we'll readdress this in the future and go back to the long reach ones, but I believe this is what is supposed to be in there. So that is what I'm gonna put in there. And after this, I wanted to see if I could get the bike to run. I hadn't ran the bike since I rebuilt the carburetor and put those plugs in, so quick adjustment and we fired it up. Okay, so now that we have a running motorcycle, we need to have a stopping motorcycle because running and riding is nice and important, but uh, stopping's pretty good. So we have the front master cylinder here on my workbench at the house and a front master cylinder rebuild kit. Uh, I don't believe that this is the stock 70s master cylinder i'm not entirely sure but i i ordered one that should fit you can see the years and the part number on it there and hopefully this will actually go into this master cylinder and if you forgot what the inside of this looks like from earlier in this video or actually you know what i think that was from last video there you go this has obviously sat a really long time and this brake fluid has completely degraded and uh, this is really, really bad. I, I'll be honest, I, I don't have a lot of hope for this, but we're gonna try. So I just took a screwdriver and scraped some of that gummy, nasty shit out of there for now. And uh, took the snap ring off. We'll push this pin out. Oh, come on. Sometimes this stuff is hard to do one-handed. I have to put the camera down. There it goes. 
and pull the hand lever out and then we're going to disassemble all the guts to be able to pull the uh, spring and the plunger and all that out of it. So I've rebuilt this master cylinder and everything's in order in the way the book calls for but I'm not entirely sure this is a factory master cylinder and there were a lot of pieces missing out of this so I filled up with some brake fluid to test it and now if you work the brake it's trying to suck my finger into the outlet port and it's pushing fluid out behind the lever so it's working exactly opposite of how it should so I guess I'm gonna have to take this back apart and figure out what I've somehow magically messed up or maybe this whole thing is just trash we'll figure that out so I ended up taking this master cylinder back apart cleaning it out some more putting it all back together looking at multiple diagrams making sure I had everything right and it just never worked and I ended up just chunking it in the scrap metal pile and ordering another one from here it was on to the rear master cylinder so I've got the rear master cylinder pulled off of this bike too and I pulled this because you see the wetness there where the uh, push rod for the pedal goes in it was leaking there but now that I've got this off and out, the inside of this is absolutely disgusting. We're going to take it outside, or at least over here in the sunlight, where we can see it a little better, maybe. I'm not sure how well that comes through on camera, if you can see it, but the entire inside of this master cylinder is just absolutely filthy. It's hard not to get the shadow of my my phone in there but it's rusted and crusty and corroded and um after kind of how the front master cylinder is going where basically you know i took it all apart it was disgusting i cleaned it i put it back together with the rebuild kit and didn't work and then i took it apart and put it back together again and it still didn't work um I kind of think I'm just going to order two new master cylinders for this bike and be done with it. Or at least done with the master cylinders. That doesn't mean that I'm done with brakes. I have uh, brake pads at the house for this. I don't have calipers. Um, with, with these being so gross as they are, I would not be surprised if the calipers are equally as disgusting in the lines. I might end up having to replace just completely everything in the brakes system of this bike to make it, you know reliable and roadworthy um i really hate having to spend that kind of money on this thing because brake components aren't really cheap but brakes are probably brakes and tires i would say are probably like the two most important things you should fix on an old bike and like i just said brakes and tires are probably your two biggest safety things on a bike to fix and the tires on this motorcycle had good tread on them and really were not that dry cracked but they were really super old so i went ahead and pulled the wheels and tires out and brought them home to try and change these tires myself on my little harbor freight tire changing stand though as you will shortly see it didn't really go so well but uh, we'll also do some wheel bearings and wheel seals while I've got the wheels and tires off of this bike. So here we are at home breaking the bead and Kenneth's out here with me and he was having a lot of fun helping me do this and also got kind of sidetracked trying to catch some frogs. Okay guys, so we're almost done. My dad's still working on that motorcycle tower. Tiger, um, I'm still working on the track here. He's still working over here. So... What I'm going to do, okay, see, we have set out all the rags. That's pretty nice, too. So, what we're going to do with those rags and that, we're going to um, then make, oh, guys, look. That's mine. Okay, anyways, I'm going to set you guys up and then do the grass. Sorry, guys. What'd you get, Kenneth? 
I got a frog. In your frog trap. Okay, guys. All right. I didn't do it in the frog trap. I just found it right there. Then All right. I caught you're, it. You're, you're kind of oh, holding it. Some... Hey, dude, you're holding him by the legs. Hold him by the body. <laughs> Be nice. <laughs> All right. Squish it. Ooh. I got a froggy. <laughs> yeah, you caught one. Oh. All right, let's leave him out. I let's... have to show mommy. You have to show mommy. Okay, take him to mommy. Okay, so it is uh, several days later, and I cannot get this tire to jump the bead onto the wheel. Um, this Harbor Freight tire changing stand really kind of sucks. It has a lot of play in it. It's not very heavy. You can flip it over pretty easily, and um, I just can't hold it all still and walk the bead around. I end up, if I'm working right here, I end up pulling the bead over there, and I just don't have enough hands to do this because I'm not an octopus, so that would be cool. Um, and uh, yeah, so I am really, really busy and I don't have a whole lot of time and I don't really have a whole lot of money either, but I think in the interest of, uh, you know, the interest of my own sanity and just my time instead of wasting any more time on these, I'm going to take both wheels. This still has the old tire on it. This wheel with the new tire. This wheel with the old tire. My new tire up there. Maybe take the chickens with me. I don't know. And uh, I'm just going to take it to my local independent Harley shop. I'm just going to throw this stuff in the back of the truck and just give it to them and whatever. It cost me 30 bucks or 40 bucks for them to finish mounting that one tire and mount the other tire and balance them both. Uh, it, honestly, that's just, it's worth it at this point in time. So that's what we're going to do on this. I try and do everything myself, but sometimes you just got to be like, you know what? I can't do this. And here's my wheels with some new tires on them. I ended up just, um, I ended up just taking them to my local independent shop and I spent $73 after tax and tire disposal fee and shop supplies getting these two tires mounted and balanced and one of them was almost all the way on which I think is maybe a little bit much but I'm sure it's a lot cheaper than the dealership which is really my only option and um, I spent a lot of time fighting that one front tire trying to get it on so that $73 was worth it for me to be able to you know have two tires that are ready to go. I I do need to still pull the wheel seals and wheel bearings out of both fronts and rears, and I'm going to replace all of that, uh, so that'll be fresh. But tires are mounted and balanced, so should be ready to rock. So while this thing is on jack stands, I'm working on doing some other stuff, like replacing this throttle cable and the grips. You can see I've already put the grip on this side, um, and. I've got a new throttle cable for it, and the end of it is the same size, diameter, and thread pitch, if the camera will focus, as the old one. Um, however, the hole that it screws into on this for the new throttle tube is smaller. I've got the handy dandy thread checker out, and this is a 5 16 by 18. So, I'm just going to drill and tap that to be 5 16 by 18. So there we go. Just used a 17 64th drill bit as prescribed by the tap. And just tapped it by hand right here on the table. It took like three minutes. Problem solved. And I did all of that with the throttle cable and it was not all for nothing because I am eventually going to need that threaded, but um, you can see I've got the carburetor just hanging off. But long story short, this throttle cable is too long. It will work if you route it incorrectly, if you go through the return one and then kind of loop it around and put a kink in it, which is how the other throttle cable was ran, but I don't want that. I don't want a kink in my throttle cable. 
So, that one's just going to go in the spare parts box. And I've got one that's about three inches shorter, which should get us exactly where we need to be. So, let's put this on. So, I've got the carburetor just screwed back up on there by hand. You can see the throttle cables in there. Ran it along the bottom of the tank, and I goofed. I put it underneath this fuel line so I ended up just cutting this line in half this tanks basically empty and you can see how that fuel line was routed squished between the frame mount or the frame and the um, tank tab there and that tank is not actually even bolted down it's supposed to go in this tab right here that is um, so someone has goofed that up so I'm gonna fix that um, but I just cut this fuel line to jump the cable through it, and I don't know if you can see this fuel dripping out. It's like really red, like it's uh, that's inside of that tank's probably pretty varnished up. Um, I haven't done it yet. I meant to put a, a little inline filter to the carburetor, and I'm definitely gonna do that because I feel like without it, I'm gonna end up clogging the jets up on this carburetor pretty quickly. So, changing. A, I wish this camera focused. There it is. Changing, uh, you can see that sort of red varnishy crap that I'm talking about right there. Changing a little inline fuel filter in the side of the road is probably much easier and faster than changing jets. But back to the throttle cable. I um, wish I had bought one with a 45. I've got it. It's so close. So close. I'm going to screw around with this. Maybe I can move the controls a little bit. Um, this is all kind of making me wish I just yanked these handlebars off because I really don't like them and I don't think they look good on this bike. I don't think they're proportional to it with this, the big tanks, which I'm not really crazy about the big tanks anyways. But um, basically where I was at on this bike was I'm not changing anything like that. I'm not changing tanks. I'm not changing the seat. I'm not changing the bars. I just want to get this bike running and rideable in a you know pretty reliable fashion and ride it around the way it is right now before I go changing all this stuff that I don't like because I already have a bunch of money in this bike and I don't want to tie up a ton more money in this bike um, especially if it's something that I might not end up keeping so all right so we're back out here in my little shop at the house where this whole episode started and let's talk a little bit about where we're at right now on this bike so Tires are on, a um, few other little odds and ends are done, brakes are getting close to being done. Um, my two main hang-ups though right now, as you just finished watching, are the fuel tanks and the throttle cable. We'll start with throttle cable. So, the throttle cable was, I didn't quite show this in the last videos I don't think routed incorrectly. There's a 32 inch throttle cable on this bike when I purchased it and so that's what I bought to replace it with. The old throttle cable had a kink in it, a very noticeable one, and it was starting to fray. I thought it was just from age. I didn't really pay much attention to it when I took it out and I should have because if I did I would have noticed that instead of running the throttle cable through the ferrule that it should be in for the pull, for the open the throttle position, the cable was too long. And the previous owner ran it through the return cable and then looped it up into the pull cable. And so it was making this weird goofy S curve, which is what put that nasty kink in the, and was ripping the braided uh, steel of the cable apart. So I ordered a 28 and a half inch cable for it and it was really close, but after spending quite a lot of time moving the cable around, I couldn't ever get it to a spot where it would actually work. It's still just a little too long. And I'm not comfortable with buying a one size fits all, cut to length, crimp it yourself cable. I'm sure it would probably be okay. Maybe it would, maybe it won't. I have some bad experiences though um, with my Volkswagen that I used to drag race using cables of that nature. I never had good luck out of them and they often broke. And uh, a broken throttle cable or a hung throttle in a car is one thing. On a motorcycle, it's another thing. That's a great way to meet a tree or the back of an SUV. So, I think where I'm at on that is I'm probably going to change the handlebars on it. Those T-bars are really low, 
and not very long, so they would need a very short cable that doesn't seem to exist, or if it does, I can't seem to find it. And I never liked those bars anyways. Which brings me now to the fuel tanks. As I just talked about earlier, and you just saw, they're very varnished inside. My original plan was to ride the bike the way it sits right now, with the big 5-gallon FLH or FLT, the big touring bike, full-size tanks on it, and the T-bars, which I think is a goofy combination, and I don't really like those tanks anyways. But in the interest of saving some money, I was just going to ride the bike the way that it sat. Now, seeing how bad the insides of those tanks are, um, and combined with this whole throttle cable handlebar snafu, I think what I'm going to do is rip the wiring out of this bike, get rid of all the handlebar um, controls other than brake and clutch lever, just have levers on the bars, pull the tanks off, and replace them with a new set of narrowed split tanks and paint them to match if I can, which will be an adventure, because I really do, honestly, I love that sort of orange crackle flake paint job that's on the bike. I think it's really cool 70s sort of styling. And uh, clean the bike up a little bit with a set of bars that I actually like. And hopefully doing all of that will get me to a running and riding shovel head that's a little more aesthetically pleasing. I may go ahead and change the seat too while I'm at it. Um, I'm not crazy about that Mustang seat. It's a little too sporty and new. It'll look good on like a Dyna Glide or something. I think that bike kind of needs like a quilted button, uh, you know, styled seat. Like sort of what's on my iron head. You can't see my iron head, but it's sitting right there. Anyways, enough rambling about my plans for the future. That's where we're at on this bike. It's been a lot of hard work so far. Uh, I have put more time and effort and money into this motorcycle than any other motorcycle I've done thus far. And it's been quite the adventure, but I really love this bike and I'm really proud to own a shovel head. Uh, and uh, I'm excited to see where this thing goes. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you come back for the next episode. And uh, if you have some nice comments or some mean comments even, leave them down below. We'll see you guys on the next one.